people, this is Catherine. Welcome to Double O Kidney. Summertime is about being carefree, but if you have kidney disease, you will have to be smart to avoid the five hidden dangers of summer. People suffering from chronic kidney disease are four times more at risk than the general population of dehydration, heat stroke, and some other less known dangers. The good news is that you can avoid them if you know them. Here's what the top 5 worst dangers of summer are and how to protect your kidneys from them. And by the way, in the final part of the video there is an update I want to give you about the artificial kidney that will end the need for dialysis. And I'm also answering your questions, so don't miss the final part of the video. But let's start with our top five now. Number five, dehydration. Even if it's just number five, dehydration should not be taken lightly. More than half the world's population suffers from dehydration. And what they don't know is that being dehydrated will put your kidneys through a lot of extra work something you absolutely don't want because you know even being mildly dehydrated can lead to symptoms such as fatigue bad breath muscle cramps and headaches dehydration headaches are so common that i took the habit of drinking a big glass of water at the very first hint of a headache now if dehydration is affecting your head you can imagine how bad it can be for your kidneys. So if you think you're not getting enough water, there's usually no harm in drinking more. Obviously, this doesn't apply to patients in the advanced stages of kidney disease. Okay, do you want to check your level of dehydration right now? Here's a quick test. Pinch the skin on the back of your hand like this and keep it pinched for three to four seconds. When you release it, you have to see how quickly the skin swings out in place. You see, mine is pretty fast. Yes, I just drank a glass of water. If the fold of your skin swings out straight away too, it means you're well hydrated. Good for you. If your skin takes longer than mine to return in place, or if it stays in the position, even for a moment, it could mean you're dehydrated. Go and have a glass of water right now. Okay, it's not that bad to be dehydrated once in a while, but don't let it become a habit, okay? Now guys, if you know anyone who could benefit from improving their kidney function, share this video with them now. Send them a WhatsApp message or use the share button below. Okay, now you are perfectly hydrated and feel already better and maybe you want to engage in a fun summer activity such as swimming or going for a hike. But this can be dangerous for your kidneys too. How? Number four, heat exhaustion. Whether you're working, running, playing sports or hiking in the hot weather this summer, be careful out there, don't overdo it. Problems may arise when people not used to exercise start doing too much physical activity too quickly. You know, when the mercury climbs towards 90 degrees, it's much easier to overexert yourself, especially if combined with dehydration, very common when it's hot. This can lead to serious problems. Now, the very first sign of troubles is muscle spasms. When you sweat too much in the heat, your body loses salt and water, which can cause brief but painful muscle spasms. You may also experience goosebumps and feel cold even while you're still out in the heat. This is especially dangerous if you have kidney problems. It can even raise your creatinine levels. Remember that creatinine levels are higher in case of strenuous exercises and this means that the kidneys are being overexerted too. What to do to prevent this? 
If you feel too hot or you have spasms or cramps, immediately stop what you're doing and move to the shade or indoors and find a way to cool down and hydrate yourself. Get some rest. But don't give up on exercising altogether. Consider that exercising regularly is maybe the best thing you can do to keep your kidneys healthy. So if you want to start exercising during the summer, start small and most of all, wait until the temperature drops in the evening to do physical activity. Your kidneys will thank you. Just to be sure to avoid being beaten by an insect while you're at it. Here's why. Number three. Insect bites. When exploring the outdoors, don't forget to be mindful of insect bites, which are not only annoying but can transmit serious illnesses. Be especially wary of ticks and mosquitoes. Mosquitoes can transmit diseases such as West Nile virus and dengue fever, and in some zones of the US, even Lyme disease. Also, there is one hidden danger for kidney patients when it comes to insect bites, and it's in the topical creams and ointments people use to treat them. Many people think that just because the medication is only applied to the skin, it won't reach the internal organs. Nothing more wrong. Actually, some of the most commonly used topical creams even have active ingredients that can be dangerous for kidney patients. Benadryl each stopping cream, for example. This one is widely used and usually considered safe, but it has an active ingredient called diphenhydramine that's known to cause retention of urine in your bladder. So be careful with it. Also, some doctors recommend topical NSAIDs such as Voltaren to treat insect bites. I'm talking about OTC medications here, so people usually assume they're safe. But this is not always the case, especially for people with kidney disease. NSAIDs are actually known to cause kidney damage, so double check every medication you use, topical creams included. So, what should you do instead to stop the itch? The simplest anti-itching compound is a paste made of baking soda and water. Use just enough water to make a sticky paste and spread it on. A lot safer. Is there anything baking soda can't do? Well, at least one thing. It won't help you with the next hidden danger of summer. Lack of sleep. We've all been there, you're tossing and turning in bed, struggling because your sweat has you practically glued to the sheets. It is awful. If you don't have air conditioning at home, the summer heat may be the worst enemy of your sleep. Unfortunately, if you are already not sleeping well, I have other bad news. Lack of sleep has been linked to some health problems such as weight gain, diabetes, heart disease, and a rapid decline in kidney function. This was found in people sleeping regularly 5 hours or less per night. Here's why lack of sleep is number 2 in this top 5. It's a more serious issue than people realize. So, what if you can't sleep well during the summer? My advice is, and consider this my kidney health tip of the day. Do whatever you can to increase the amount of sleep you get. Don't ignore the problem. For example, you can drink plenty of water during the day but not before going to bed to keep your body hydrated and cool while you sleep. Yes, hydration can help. And you can also have a color of lukewarm shower or bath just before going to bed to feel less hot. If nothing helps, consider using a fan or investing in air conditioning. Now, the problem of fighting the heat during the night is something we all have to face. So let me know in comment section what's your ingenious solution to this problem. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. 
Now, time for the worst danger of summer. Number one, heat stroke. When temperature reach sweltering, it's not just uncomfortable, it's also dangerous and potentially deadly. Extreme heat sends an average of 65,000 Americans to emergency rooms annually, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. In extreme heat, your body and your kidneys must work extra hard to maintain a healthy temperature. And unfortunately, if you have kidney problems, heart disease, or if you take medications, you are at higher risk for heat stroke. Poorer circulation and less effective sweating are the main reason behind this. But many medications have side effects that can play a crucial role. Heat stroke, the most dangerous of the heat-related illnesses, can occur when the body is unable to properly cool down after prolonged exposure to excessive heat. This happens especially to people with other health conditions. The good news? It's preventable. How to do so? Stop all activity if you begin to feel symptoms such as fast pulse, red dry skin, headache or dizziness and muscle cramps. Find a shady place to rest and if you can, bath or take a shower in cool water and always be hydrated during the day. Another tip. If you can, check on your friends and neighbors to make sure they're okay. This is especially important for the young and the elderly who are most at risk for heat-related illnesses. Above all, be on guard, okay? If you start feeling sick, take the heat seriously. Okay, this was the number one for today. I hope you liked my top five. But don't go away yet, it's time for what I like to call the double kidney community part of the video. First of all, there is a very interesting update about the implantable artificial kidney. The Kidney Project, the team conducting the creation of the artificial kidney, has been awarded a $500,000 prize by KidneyX. Now, KinneyX is a public-private partnership aimed to create innovation to the chronic kidney disease community. They recognize the most recent application of the science behind the artificial kidney called iHemo for its potential to allow patients to conveniently conduct frequent and prolonged hemodialysis sessions in a safe and simply manner at home. Now, iHemo is not just an interesting new approach to hemodialysis, a field that's incredibly in need for innovation. iHemo is also a critical stepping stone towards the development of the bioartificial kidney, according to the Kidney Project team leader. Now, I'm following closely the development of the bioartificial kidney because I'm convinced that this kind of technology is going to stop the need for dialysis for good in the near future. And the human trials are still scheduled for 2020. So if you want me to keep you updated, subscribe and click the notification bell below. I'll talk about both the implantable artificial kidney and the Kidney X partnership in one of my recent videos. You can find it up here if you want to know more. Time for your questions now. The first one is from Falling Angel and was posted on my video about the watermelon and the five healthiest summer fruits. He asks, Hey young Catherine, it is Hey young Catherine, is it safe to eat the seeds of these fruits? Thanks in advance. Hi Falling Angel. Yes, it is safe to eat the seeds of the watermelon. Actually, watermelon seeds can even be healthy for you. They are a source of vitamins, omega-3 fatty acids, magnesium, and more. But there is also some potassium in them. Now, 
To get these nutrients from the seeds of the watermelon, there is a little bit of labor required as they need to be sprouted, shelled and dried. Because when you just swallow watermelon seeds raw, they move through your digestive tract without being digested. And that's still perfectly safe, all right? So it's your choice, but in no way watermelon seeds are going to harm you. Another question, this is from a user called Big Bottom 32. <laughs> nice nickname. Hi Catherine, have you made any videos that explain bun and bun creatinine ratio? If not, perhaps you can explain it in your questions or a future video. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Bun to creatinine ratio. Why is this important? Bun to creatinine ratio could be an easy indicator of loss of kidney function. This is because bun levels will raise before creatinine levels start to rise due to loss of kidney function. Bun or blood urea nitrogen is a common blood test that measures the quantity of urea, a normal waste product of the body. It can tell you how well your kidneys and liver are working. Creatinine is another waste product that healthy kidneys filter out of your body through urine. The ratio is important because elevated bun relative to creatinine is usually an early sign of kidney problems. Now, the problem is that the bun to creatinine ratio often gives useless alerts, okay? This can happen when creatinine is normal and bun is low. Now, creatinine and GFR are a lot better at indicating how much your kidneys are working, okay? GFR in particular is the number one indicator. All kidney disease patients should know theirs. Last question. Hello, Miss Catherine. I have a question. Can kidney disease cause hair loss? Is it common and is it treatable? Thank you. Hello, Jonathan. Nice to read from you. Yes, kidney disease can cause hair loss. Changes to your body such as hair loss, various skin problems and nail discoloration are frequent in people with kidney disease. Talking about hair loss, there are two things that can cause this problem, malnutrition and prescription drugs. People with CKD are at high risk for deficiencies in zinc, calcium, iron, and B vitamins. Now, these deficiencies can be solved with the right diet and supplementation, like taking uh, special renal vitamins with high levels of B vitamins. But also consider that statins, commonly prescribed cholesterol-lowering medications, have hair loss listed as a side effect, and a lot of other side effects. Actually, I made a video about stunts because they can damage your kidneys too, in some cases. If you want to watch it, it's up here. Okay, this was our last question for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't miss the next one coming this Tuesday. For now, thank you for watching.